What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Cam ATL. Shout out to the DFS squad. Shout out to everybody watching this video right now. Drop a like down below because I already know you're going to love it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I hope you guys had an amazing weekend of DFS, spending time with your family, whatever it was. I hope you had a great time doing it. I'm going to comment the winner of the giveaway down below in the comment section. Sorry, my dog is walking in the background, if you can hear. But, uh, so yeah, uh, comment anything down in the comment section, like the video, subscribe to the channel to enter your name into the $50 giveaway that I do every single week on this channel. Also, scroll down because after I am done recording this video and posting it, I will be commenting the winner of the $50 giveaway for last week. Now, as you guys know, I'm very forward with whether I'm winning or losing. When I come on here to record, every single time I will mention whether I lost or if I won. Most of the time, if you follow me on Twitter, you will know because I also announce on there whether I win or I lose. But as you guys know, I had a rough week a few weeks ago, right? We had a rough week. Every single day, I was, I was frustrated. You know, I was like, I didn't know what to do. I was doing everything right, you know, staying with the process. And like I told you guys... You stay with the process that you know, you keep doing it, because DFS can be frustrating sometimes. You're doing all the right things and guys just don't show up. The best hitters in the world can go out and strike out four out of the five at-bats, okay? These guys can go out and get zeros at any moment. So DFS can get frustrating at points, you know? Regardless of what you do, you can have uh, rough times. But the key is to keep a level head and keep going with it. Stay on the process, do everything the right way, and I am living proof of it, okay? I told you guys that because I've been through the rough patches, I've been through the huge patches, and I know the main thing is just to stay chill, regardless if you're even 15 games in a row. Do you know how stressed out I was and how like anxious I was when I got to 15 in a row for NBA? And I was like, okay, I'm about to get the 16 in a row. Like every win from like win number 13 on was like super, I was super anxious every time because I'm like, this is starting to get to uncharted territory. You know what I'm saying? But regardless, I stayed level-headed and I was able to get to the 16th. I did lose the 17th, ended up. So 16 is my, my streak. But what I'm trying to say is regardless, stay level-headed, okay? At greenlightdfs.com, the reason I'm saying all this, we are now... Seven and two, the last nine slates. And one of those losses was due to injury. If it wasn't for the injury to one of our pitchers, we would have cashed. And we would be to eight and one. Sorry, my math sucks. Eight and one, the last nine days after a slow week. That's coming off one of the worst weeks of my DFS life. Coming back and then putting up this, these numbers. Because you stay focused and you stay on the process regardless. All right? Speaking of which, we are now four in a row. Part of that nine is the last four in a row we have gone straight coming into the weekend. We swept the entire weekend early and main slates. Now it's time to get into this week. Let's go ahead and get straight into it, all right? GreenlightDFS.com. Let's keep this streak going. I believe for MLB it was like 12 to 14. I'm not exact. We play so many sports. We have streaks for both of them. I think NBA was 16-day streak. I think MLB is about 12 to 14 between there. If anybody knows, if anybody was with us for baseball last year, comment down below what our win streak record was. All right, now, let's get into this. Now, starting off at pitchers on this slate, one thing we know, there's not a game in course, and there's not a game in Arlington, okay? So, that doesn't make batters a super high necessity. Now, obviously, you want some lefties from Chicago because Tehran cannot get lefties out. You want the one guy in that Colorado lineup that absolutely mashes lefties because he's facing a bad one, which is Nolan Arenado. We'll get to him. Other than that, you really don't have to spend like crazy, okay? So, with the pitching being how it is, too, you have Giolito going against Boston. I don't play pitchers versus Boston regardless. Regardless. I don't care, okay? I do not play pitchers versus them, so I will not be playing Giolito against Boston. The next guy up, Clayton Kershaw in the high five at 10 4. He's been very, very consistent. If you take a look at his numbers, he's got a 2.85 ERA. Very, very solid. He's won seven. Out of his eight starts, he's doing a very, very good job, okay? A very good job. His strikeout rate isn't where it's always been what we're used to with him. But we're not even halfway through the season, so expect him to zone, hone that in and start really getting it going. Arizona is a team that has been putting up runs. They've been playing very well. It's very, very hot in Arizona. It's kind of like playing like Arlington, except the stadium's not as nice as Arlington when it comes to hitter-friendly. But... It's very, very hot out there. I believe it's been like over 100 degrees a day, something like that. It's super hot out there in Arizona. But 
When it comes to safety on this slate, especially for cash games, Clayton Kershaw is the spend up guy that is very safe because when you look at the rest of the pitchers on this slate, there's not many of them other than Eduardo Rodriguez, the other guy we're going to talk about at 8 7. Eduardo is playing for Boston, going against the White Sox. Okay? I love Eduardo here against the White Sox. They strike out a ton. Eduardo is a solid, solid, solid pitcher. He feels safe as well with the matchup, with the K rate. Should get a little bump here in this matchup against a K heavy White Sox team. So Eduardo Rodriguez paired up with Clayton Kershaw. With my first look at this slate, this is the route that I am loving for cash games for the safety route. Both of these guys do not expect to be blown up while all of the other pitchers on the slate could be blown up. Okay, that's what bothers me with them. There are a few guys that we could possibly take a risk on, but I'll have to look more into that before I recommend anybody because I'm really not feeling many of the other pitchers. Okay, now let's get to the bats. Starting off at first base, Brandon Belt. His price is too cheap. Plain and simple. Lefty righty matchup against Gray. He's a solid hitter. He's only 3 4. That price is too cheap here. He is in San Francisco, which is more of a pitcher-friendly ballpark than a hitter-friendly ballpark. John Gray is a strikeout-throwing pitcher, but he gives up a lot of hard contact, and he can get dominated at times, okay? So expect Brandon Belt to do very well and pay off that salary at only 3-4, and with us paying up for our pitchers, we're going to need to find some value, all right? Next up, the reason why we need to find some value because I love Nolan Arenado. He got sun, He got yesterday off. He's coming in fresh. He got some rest finally. He's coming in against a bad left-handed pitcher in Pomerantz. This is not Coors. I understand that. This is more of a pitcher-friendly ballpark. But Arenado is absolutely elite versus left-handed pitching. Okay, He is the best hitter on the board on this slate against this bad lefty in Pomerantz who has been getting absolutely crushed. Okay, So I absolutely... For the 20th time saying absolutely, love Nolan Arenado. Next up, probably my favorite hitter on the slate, come my first look, Kyle Schwarber. 3-9. The best part about this is Kyle Schwarber is a power-hitting lefty, and he's facing a pitcher who can't get lefties out. Now, I will give it to Julio. He has stepped up his game versus lefties. He's not as bad as he has been throughout his career, but... He's still bad, okay? He's solid versus righties and very bad versus lefties. So I love Rizzo at a solid price. I believe Rizzo was 4-3. I like Rizzo, okay? I like Schwarber, okay? I like Carlos Gonzalez. All right, so get some exposure to the lefties of Chicago. I do like them versus Tehran. And that's it, guys. Eduardo Rodriguez, Clayton Kershaw, because the pitching sucks so bad on this slate, these guys just feel super safe as of my first look. Brandon Belt, because of price reasons only, okay, if you end up having money, go Anthony Rizzo. I love him. Nolan Arenado at third base and Kyle Schwarber. And that's the high five, guys. Thank you guys for joining me as always. Make sure you like the video down below. Subscribe to the channel and comment anything down in the comment section and enter your name into the $50 giveaway that I do every single week on this channel. We are four in a row at greenlightdfs.com. Let's go ahead and clear the entire week. Let's go ahead and keep it going, man. All right? Remember, regardless of how bad you might be doing right now, just stay focused. You will turn it around. Like I said, I had a horrible week, one of the worst weeks of my DFS playing life, and then turned it around and now am seven into the last nine slates, and one of them was solely because of an injury to my pitcher. Okay? So that just shows you that just stay on your process. I didn't change a damn thing about what I was doing. All right? You don't need to change what you're doing. Okay, baseball can just be a roller coaster at times. All right, thank you guys for joining me. I'm out.